All right, Wolves, welcome to your second December DEN meeting. I'm your DEN leader, Ben. First off, let's get started with our Pledge of Allegiance and then our Scout Oath and our Scout Law. So if I can have you stand up and recite those with me. All right. Scout Salute. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two, please join me in the scout sign and repeat the scout oath. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Please join me in the scout law. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Two. All right, Wolves, welcome back. Now we're gonna get started on our Cubs Who Care elective adventure. I've got some of my friends here at Northern Star Scouting. They're gonna to talk to us a little bit about disability awareness and how we can see diversity throughout our community. We all have things that make us unique. What makes us unique is what makes us strong. We have different colored hair and different colored eyes, and some people are double jointed. So today we're going to take some time to talk about what makes us unique and how we can be more accepting of all of the things that makes us individuals. Learning about other people's experiences is important to how we shape our own way of thinking. The more varied our life experiences are, the more we can learn about and more be compassionate about other people we have in our lives. I have come up with a few people that you may or may not be familiar with. He is known for playing the piano and adding his own Motown funk to every single piece of music he makes. He has won over 25 Grammys, the third leading Grammy winner. He has 10 number one hits and he is one of my favorite musicians. Stevie Wonder has had songs like Superstition, Isn't She Lovely, and I Just Called to Say I Love You, among so many others. He can sing amazing and complex melodies and makes it look easy. One of the challenges Stevie Wonder faces is that he is blind. He was born prematurely and he was left inside of a oxygen tank to incubate his lungs. And it is believed he was kept there for too long and there's too much oxygen which made him go blind. When he was five years old he told his mom, don't worry about me being blind because I am happy. In those words, he is showing the complete example of a scout is cheerful. He maintained a positive attitude as a child and in no doubt helped him be a successful music musician in his career. He used that positive attitude to reach himself to play the piano and the harmonica before he was even the age of 10. Another person I'd like to talk about is a very well-known president of the United States. He was in a wheelchair while he was in office, but it was a minor kept secret. This president, of course, is Franklin D. Roosevelt. He himself had polio when he was a little bit older, and he became paralyzed from his waist down. He did not let that fact stop him. Not only was he president several times, but he also led us through World War II, and is also the son-in-law of the great Teddy Roosevelt, who was, everybody knows, was a great friend of Lord Baden-Powell. Learning about different people from different backgrounds can always help yourself become a better listener, a kinder friend, and more friendly people, and more friendly to people in all walks of life. Wow, that's really cool to hear about some famous people who did so much. I also have a really good friend who competes in extreme sports. So now we're gonna hear from my friend Dan, who's gonna tell us a little bit about adaptive extreme sports. Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Edmondson and I am an adaptive athlete competing in skateboarding, wake surfing, and snowboarding. And you might be wondering, what's adaptive sport? Um, and it's a term for sports for people with disabilities. Uh, we take sports that everyone does and we adapt them to suit our needs um, so that we can all be a part of it. 
And for me, that means using different types of equipment to change uh, the nature of the sport um, so that I can so that I can ride uh, skateboard, snowboard, and wake surf. So adaptive skateboarding, uh, what I mean by that is someone might uh, be in a wheelchair or they might have an amputation or um, a spinal injury. Um, so uh, they, they might not be able to ride the same way that everyone else does, but they can adapt the sport to themselves. And usually that means using just a regular old skateboard. So if you've got a, a regular old skateboard at home and you want to try it out, there's plenty of videos online. You can uh, Google that. Make sure that you are working with someone who knows what they're doing and can show you the basics. Um, that was an example of a short board. Um, here we also have a long board or a cruiser or a downhill board. So these are uh, going to be uh, easier to roll over some larger rocks and go on pathways um, and also downhill. So uh, very different setups. So make sure you do the research on what kind of equipment you need before you start on your skateboarding adventure. Uh, so for me as a double amputee, I'm on two prosthetic legs. Which, uh, which makes skateboarding just a little tricky. Um, when I first started, I learned how to ride standing on my two prosthetic legs. And, uh, and ultimately, I found it easier to take them off and to ride with knee pads. So I started riding um, kneeling on the board um, using knee pads that I had custom made. So you can see here, uh, this is a knee pad that I had altered. Um, and it has a hardened end here to uh, protect the end of my limb if I fall down. Um, it also has a piece of a shoe that was cut off and then secured on to give me grip on the board. Uh, and so I put this over my knee like a regular knee pad. Um, but since I'm an amputee and my limb only goes to just here below my knee, um, this is basically my skate shoe. Um, so when I ride, I ride the same as everyone else, but I ride on my knees with my specialized knee pads. I've been really fortunate to be a part of the adaptive sports that I do, and uh, there's a large and growing community around it. Um, they've given me opportunities to try things that I've never been able to try and get pretty good at them. Um, as a result of that, I've competed in wake surf competitions. Minnesota here has the first adaptive wake surf competition in the country. Um, we also do downhill snowboard competitions. Uh, and then also I've been part of the, uh, um, added to the International Downhill Federation as one of their first adaptive riders. Um, I actually uh, was the first to log first place in a downhill competition in the adaptive category. So just so everyone gets a visual idea of what I'm usually working with, uh, since we can't uh, show you um, head to toe on camera here, I'm going to show you that this is what my legs looks like. So. This is what I stand on, walk on, day in and day out, and I have that on both sides, both below the knee. And so learning how to do an adaptive sport on a prosthetic can be tricky, um, and it just takes time. Um, but something to remember about people with disabilities is that they're all different, just like all of us are different. And we all have to find our own ways to adapt to situations and learn things our own way. So when it comes to skateboarding, there's all kinds of different examples of ways that people with different types of disabilities and abilities have adapted the sport to make it work for them. Isn't that awesome? Thanks, Dan, for telling us a little bit about the sports that you compete in. Now, sometimes disabilities aren't something that we can see on the surface. So my friend Anna has stopped by to tell us a little bit about invisible disabilities. We're all different, right? Think about how you might be different from your friends or even your family. Some people have brown eyes, other people have blue eyes, some people are tall, others are short. You might have curly hair, while you know other people who have straight hair. The point being, we all look different. But what about the differences that we can't see? For example, you can't tell if a person is a great artist or, or a really good cook just by how they look. Everyone needs different needs met to succeed. People who don't have perfect eyesight have glasses or contacts, or people might use a hearing aid so they can hear better, or a cane so they can get around more easily. When we think of disabilities, we typically think of things that we can see. But sometimes, disabilities can be invisible. You wouldn't know that a person has a disability just by how they look. These types of disabilities affect how a person acts or how they feel. Just like how we all have different strengths, weaknesses, and talents, all of our bodies have different abilities. 
Sometimes we need tools or need to use strategies to help our bodies do what we need them to do. A person with dyslexia sees words in jumbled orders or backwards and they don't and their eyes don't send the correct image to their brain. They are fully capable of understanding what they're reading, but they just might need a little bit more time to concentrate while they read. Or they can also listen to the audio version of that same text to get the information. People with dyslexia are not deciding to jumble the letters in their head. Their body just takes in the information that way. Another example might be someone with autism how they might cover their ears when things get very loud. You might not think it's very loud yourself, but to them, they have really great hearing, so it can seem a little bit too loud for them to handle. We can help people with invisible disabilities by being courteous and asking what we can do and by respecting their requests, such as lowering our voices when we are being too loud so we don't hurt people's ears. Everyone's body works a little bit differently and everyone needs to do what they can to help their body do the job it needs to do. The last thing that I'd like to talk about with you is a different way to communicate. For many people, this is the main way that they communicate and it's with their hands using American Sign Language or sometimes we'll hear it referred to as ASL. It's a different way to communicate using signs with your hands. It's really fun to learn how to sign your own name or sign other useful phrases. I took some time to learn some of the Scout Law. I'd like to teach that to you here today. So let's go through a few. A Scout is trustworthy. Loyal, helpful, friendly. Now I encourage you to rewatch what we just did and with the help of your parents, go online and learn the rest of the Scout Law and show that to your friends and den. All right, well, now that we've watched that video, we're partway through completing our diversity award, but there's a few more requirements that we have to finish up. And those requirements are, complete your family tree going back three generations and share with your Cub Master. Second, attend a cultural event or faith service. Third, submit a journal of activities you did to earn this award, including the activities you did in the elective adventure. And then finally, write a summary of what you've learned. Once you've completed all of those, you have earned your diversity award patch and you can apply for it by going down to the link that's listed right below me to fill out the form. All right, well, thanks for joining me today. I can't wait to see you guys in 2021 for our first January DEN meeting where we're gonna talk about what it means to stay healthy. Bye.